A few months ago, a viewer that goes by the name Luigi De Vulpix asked me to make a video listing some fighters from his home country, the Philippines. He even did part of the work, I mean a bunch of them on his comment, but unfortunately I never actually got around to do it. That changes now. Today is the day, so Luigi, this one's for you. The first fighter I will cover is probably one of the most well-known Filipino representatives, Josie Rizal from Tekken. First appearing in Tekken 7, Josie's name is inspired by Filipino national hero, Jose Rizal, a key member of the propaganda movement that advocated political reforms, which eventually led to Philippine independence. There's also references to the Philippines in the name of many of Josie's moves, like the Linganyan Stomp, Switch Iligan, Punquil Ring and Kawasan Falls, among others. Furthermore, the white flower designs on Josie's midriff is based on the Sampaguita, the national flower of the Philippines. Personality-wise, Josie is a bit of a crybaby, a characteristic she had ever since she was a young child. Besides that, though, she is a bright, cheerful and quite energetic young girl. She tries her best to support her family by balancing two jobs, one as a model and one as a professional fighter. Her story in Tekken 7 is all about an encounter with Kuma while she was out running on her usual training course along the mountain roads. Terrified of bears, Josie initially screamed and tried to flee, being pursued by Kuma who we later find out was only interested in returning a lost earring. Not knowing his good intentions, she eventually felt that she was unable to escape and was forced to face her feral opponent. Josie's fighting style is called Eskrima, also known as Kali or Aranis, a Filipino version of kickboxing that is actually the country's national sport. Josie plays very similarly to Bruce Irving, sharing some of his assets, but with some new tricks as well. She also resolves his weakness of not having a ground-hitting middle attack, effectively making her better than Bruce when it comes to ground game. She's also a very easy character to pick up and play with for first-time users, being a very agile and fast fighter with an overall high damage output. As far as tiers go, Josie is considered to be among the upper half of the cast, Maybe not as strong as the top tiers, but definitely capable of doing damage in the right hands. I'm guessing most of you knew Josie was from the Philippines, even if you don't follow the Tekken scene too closely. But perhaps that will not be the case for our next fighter, Talin from Soul Calibur. This extremely popular character made her debut in the third installment of the Soul series, Soul Calibur 2, reappearing in all subsequent versions except Soul Calibur 5. Nicknamed the last priestess of the wind, Talin has the power to sway the wind and relies on Earth's nature to guide her in her adventures and, most importantly, in battle. She fights with dual elbow blades, taking advantage of her wind control to give her an unpredictable edge during combat, being able to hop around and over the opponent at any moment. This unique tactic and Talin's soft and innocent personality have led her to becoming a major fan favorite, thus receiving much praise from the Soul Calibur community. Talin comes from the village of the Wind Didi, Visayan Island, present-day Philippines. She is the granddaughter of the village elder, Kalana, and daughter of its shaman, Samput. On the dark day that the evil seed pierced through the sky, Talin felt the winds and an evil aura that devoured everything in its path surged into her body, causing her to lose consciousness for days. Years later, when she was 15 years old, a man from the west brought a strange metal fragment to her homeland. She recognized the evil energy as the same force that had caused her to black out years before and resolved to return the metallic shard to where it belonged, whatever that was. Over the years she would continue to track down the shards and eventually learn that the source of the evil force was the legendary sword Soul Edge. From their own, Talin dedicated herself to treat those affected by its evil influence. Gameplay-wise, Talin is a close-range character who fights with her trademark wind dancing attacks. Her battle style heavily relies on seemingly quick and random strikes all around the opponent. Just like Josie Rizal, she uses Eskrima, though in this case the arm variant of the style, and is particularly speedy with her execution. Talin also has good mind games, mix-ups and combos thanks to her small stature and pretty fast attacks. However, her body tends to jet out before her weapon, making most of her attacks interruptible. And she also has one of the smallest ranges of any character, though her sheer speed is somewhat of compensation. For the attacks that do connect, they do a relatively low amount of damage and plenty of them ironically often put her at a disadvantage, even on impact. Her repertoire also lacks any auto guard impact options, so a talent player is hard pressed to find opportunities to gain the advantage. 
Because of these shortcomings, she is often considered to be a low tier character with high risk attacks that ultimately provide little potential rewards. So now we move on to the third character in my list, and it's time to leave giant franchise territory to cover someone from a lesser known fighting game, Santos from Def Jam. While I wouldn't be surprised to find that some of my viewers are well aware of these games, I suspect that most of you, like me, missed them entirely, so let's backtrack a little bit and talk about the series before moving on to our Filipino fighter. The franchise started in 2003 with Def Jam Vendetta, released for Nintendo GameCube and PlayStation 2. The concept for the game is a combination of professional wrestling and hip-hop, featuring several rappers, mostly from Def Jam recordings, instead of professional wrestlers. It plays very similarly to WWF No Mercy and features a lengthy story mode that allows you to level up and enhance one of four player characters in your quest to become the most well-known star in the Urban Fighting League and to fight the undefeated underground boss, D-Mob. A year later, a sequel called Fight for New York was released, improving nearly every aspect from its predecessor. This version is definitely more brutal and foul-mouthed than Vendetta, but backs it up with solid gameplay. This time there is much more emphasis on unique fighting styles, with each fighter using moves from up to three different martial arts. All of these styles are translated through what is, in essence, the same basic gameplay engine Vendetta used, but with a much, much higher emphasis on learning the techniques and moves of your opponents. And it's in this game that we find our Filipino man of the hour, Santos, whose style is, surprise surprise, kickboxing. Notice a pattern here? Santos immigrated to the United States from the Philippines in hopes of pursuing a professional kickboxing career, but when he nearly killed a, air quote, soft American fighter in a tournament, he was kicked out of the professional circuit. Now he earns his living working as a circuit fighter and is known as one of the best purists of the scene today. He's one of the few new game created circuit fighters to be playable right from the start in Fight for New York and The Takeover. He borrowed DMX's front blazing move from Def Jam Vendetta, but here it's renamed as Filipino Pride. Right now is where I usually talk about how viable a character is in the competitive scene, but there's not a lot to talk about Santos. To my surprise, part of the community does seem to take this game seriously, and I was even able to find a tier list. This puts Santo in the extra tier, consisting of, well, most of the cast. These here can still be used, but are in general weaker versions of the top tiers, which does not bode well to our Filipino friend. Now, before we move on to the last character, I'd like to address a Filipino boxer called Money Pacquiao, who our friend Luigi De Vupix specifically asked me not to include. Don't worry, bro, I'm not gonna. While he is from the Philippines and is present in many games, he is also a real person, and I tend to leave those out of my lists. Another one I had to disqualify is Spartan458, aka Nicole, an unlockable character in Dead or Alive 4. While she is of Filipino descent, Nicole isn't even an Earthling, having been born on Mars. Sure, her home country, Katagalogan, is likely majority Filipino, but I can't really counter when I opted to drop characters like Amingo and Korokan from my Fighters from Mexico video. So, sorry Nicole, you might carry a piece of the Philippines with you? but it's just not enough to get more than a special mention here. Anyways, now let's talk about someone who does count, and it's Randy Boy Jr. from Hajime no Ippo, The Fighting. As you may or may not know, Hajime no Ippo is a Japanese boxing manga series written and illustrated by George Morikawa. It has been serialized by Kodansha in Weekly Shonen Magazine since 1989 and collected in over 122 Tankobon to date. Yes, it's still going. It follows the story of high school student Makunoichi Ippo as he begins his career in boxing and, over time, obtains many titles and defeats various opponents. Randy Boy Jr. is a semi-recurring character in the series, being the main antagonist for Miyata Ichiro, arguably the second most important character. Randy is an arrogant boxer who considers himself much better than his opponents. He is also shown to be quite level-headed, but when he's losing in a fight, he can become extremely furious in contrast to his normal demeanor. There has been many adaptations of the series throughout the years, so for simplicity's sake, I decided to focus on the most recent title, Hajime no Ippo The Fighting, released for PS3 in 2014. 
This is definitely not your traditional fighting game though, as there isn't even a versus mode available without the use of a secret code. Even then, the second player will quickly discover that the mode is not exactly fair, as the camera still stays behind player 1 and the game allows him to select both party skills. Still, since there aren't many Filipino fighters out there, and Luigi the Vulpix did want me to cover Randy Boy Jr., I'm making an exception this time. I will be failing to deliver my traditional explanations of his gameplay and competitive viability though, so maybe someone with more knowledge of the Hajime no Ippo video games can cover for me in the comments section. So, Luigi, this is my list. Yeah, I know, pretty much the same one you suggested. The closest thing I got to another name was the aforementioned Spartan 458. But maybe I just didn't look far enough. If any of you know any other Filipino character that should have been here, let me know in the comment section. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please help the channel by hitting the like button and especially sharing this content with a friend. Until next time, guys.